What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're going to be talking about Ripple and talking about XRP. I do have the XRP price chart pulled up in front of us. I actually did a whole video on XRP price chart yesterday, so we're not going to be talking about it too much today because the big news that has happened is this wonderful legal document, which I've got over here at Crypto Law US that was released by Judge Netburn in the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit yesterday. I'm sure many of you have heard about this already, in which it was the thing we were all waiting for, that the SEC's motion is denied. Now, personally, I, you know, I follow the case. I, I follow the people who are important, who provide me the information on it. We don't talk about it tremendously here on this YouTube channel. And anybody watching this who usually likes to watch charts and all that good stuff is probably like, oh, I don't want to go through a legal memo. And we're not going to go through this whole legal memo, but it was something very positive that happened for the cryptocurrency market yesterday and not really just Ripple, not really just XRP, but it's one step forward towards that moment of clarity for the market, which as you guys all know, we're just bombarded with negative, negative, negative things in crypto markets and in global markets today. We got the CPI numbers, the inflation numbers of 9.1%. The markets have been volatile, started the day very green, then went very red, now back to green. We actually went red again, now we're green again, super volatile today. But for those who are invested in the blockchain world and the crypto world, this is a super important case for everybody. And it's especially a super important case for XRP holders. And if you're not an XRP holder, if you just watch this channel and it's like XRP isn't your thing, I will always have a special place in my heart for every XRP holder because we've been through more than anybody else has had to go through in this market. When the crypto market started to take off back in late 2020, XRP was going with it and the SEC came in and punished while Bitcoin and Ethereum got to continue on their rides and XRP never got to enjoy the fruits of the labors of that whole moment. And it was disappointing sitting on the sidelines here in XRP while those two assets were enjoying the fruits of what happened with the SEC. But the order that was filed by Judge Netburn yesterday, Sarah Netburn over here, denying the SEC's motion to assert attorney-client privilege over the emails that were used to come up with the draft of the Bill Hinman speech from 2018 in which he declared Ethereum and Bitcoin to not be securities. It is believed to be that in these emails is the smoking gun that XRP and Ripple were discussed in all of these emails. Now, we can all speculate why, why do we believe that, but Ripple's team has a lot of former SEC officials on their legal team, and my guess is that those officials know Ripple or XRP were mentioned in all of these emails. And the frustrating thing about being an XRP holder, cheering for Ripple to get through this, to provide some clarity for XRP and to bring it back onto exchanges has been just watching the circus of the SEC, watching the flip-flopping of stories and how you know it f you feel helpless sitting on the sideline watching this happen from the government and feeling like the government isn't trying to do the right thing, but the government's just trying to do whatever they can to win. And down here on page seven, Six of this order denying the SEC's motion to assert attorney client privilege over these emails. The judge even says in here the hypocrisy in arguing to the court on one hand that the speech is not relevant to the market's understanding of how or whether the SEC will regulate cryptocurrency, and on the other hand that him and sought and obtained legal advice from SEC counsel in drafting his speech suggests the SEC is adopting its litigation positions to further its desired goal and not out of faithful allegiance to the law. Man, <laughs> vindication, right? How it feels to be on this side and to watch this circus unfold and to see that the judge sees through it. And here at the end, accordingly, the predominant purpose of the communications was not to provide legal advice to aid the SEC in conducting the public's business. The documents must be produced. In other words, Bill Hinman's emails, the emails that were all drafted for the speech, they have to be produced and provided to Ripple. Mind you, Judge Netburn's already read all these emails. She knows what's in them, and she has denied their argument. And James Filan over there on Twitter, one of the famous lawyers who provides these documents kind of like at record speed, chimes in and says, that decision is what Black's Law Dictionary defines as a body slam. So if you're watching this and you're like, okay, whatever, they, they get to see the emails, who cares? The, the big 
speculation out there is that the smoking gun is in these emails and it'll hurt the SEC more in the long run if these if these emails ever have to be turned over. And the speculation is out there that there's no way they'll ever turn those emails over, not a chance in the world. And due to that, it is speculated that settlement will essentially be forced and the clock starts ticking now. Jeremy Hogan chimes in and says, this was not even a nuanced opinion. Judge Netburn tore apart every SEC argument for attorney-client privilege of the Hinman emails. That starts the 14-day clock for an appeal to Judge Torres, and if her recent orders are any precedent, things will move relatively fast. John Deaton also chimes in. John Deaton, of course, is the head of Crypto Law US, also represents over 67,000 XRP holders. He chimes in and says, if there are no extensions granted, Judge Torres will have the SEC's appeal and Ripple's objection to the appeal in 30 days. After Judge Torres upholds Judge Netburn's decision, the SEC can ask Judge Torres to certify an appeal to the Second Circuit. She is likely to deny doing so. Now, he feels pretty confident about that. I'm just going to speculate on this without even actually asking him. Is you know He makes a statement that Judge Torres will uphold Judge Netburn's decision. With how crazy this whole thing is, and if you guys know they had a, a call in where they had an in-person oral argument and we all called in and listened to that, they see that thousands of people are listening to this thing. Judge Netburn and Judge Torres are seeing eye to eye before Judge Netburn's making any of these decisions. And Judge Torres already knows Okay, I can back this up with what you're doing. That's my speculation. I'm not a legal expert, but judging by how confident John Deaton is here, um, that's my guess. And that they feel so confident about it that they're even going to deny an appeal to the Second Circuit. So at that point, the SEC could ask the Department of Justice permission to file a writ of mandamus. I think that's a tough pitch for the SEC to make. I don't know if Gensler has the political capital to pull it off. If they can't file a writ of mandamus or an appeal, they must turn over the documents or dot, 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 dot. <laughs> we all know it. Subtle. Jungle Inc. comments here on Twitter. He says, God bless Judge Sarah Netburn, a true American hero. And John Deaton replies, I know people get frustrated with the length of time things take, but after the very first hearing in a March of 2021, I tweeted out that the only good thing about this case was that we drew Judge Torres and Netburn. And yes, even if she de denies my pending motion, I will say it. So while we're all feeling frustrated at the SEC, who's just dancing around and doing whatever they possibly can to be right or to win, really, not, not even to be right, just to win, which you wouldn't expect from your own government, right? This is stuff like you see like in Netflix documentaries and stuff, right? Where they'll do whatever it takes just to win from your own government, right? But that at least that we do have judges on here who can see through this stuff that all of us see. So it's taken a long time. It's frustrating on how long it is taking, but it looks like, and I've heard Jeremy Hogan say this too, right? The courts end up getting it right. And so far, it seems that it's working out that way. Now, settlement, right? The things that we know that Brad Garlinghouse has said from Ripple is that they're unwilling to settle unless they can get clarity for XRP and really clarity for the rest of the market. So we all know that this market needs some type of regulatory clarity, some type of regulatory clarity in a framework to operate within so that something like this can't happen to another crypto. And really, of course, for XRP to see the potential that it's always been destined for, right? We know we have exciting things coming to the XRP ledger soon, but even more adoption and more people wanting to work on it would be ideal. We need regulatory clarity and people to feel confident to be able to use it. And of course, whatever Ripple is going to end up doing with it for their business. But a victory for Ripple and a victory for clarity is something that we all want for the market. And it feels like we got one step closer here. Like most of the predictions out there are that this case is going to be over by the end of the year. And well, if we now have the SEC backed into a corner where they're not willing to show these emails and if they run out of hands to play from their deck of cards, maybe we're sooner than we think. And my buddy over here on Twitter, Coining203, says, after yesterday's ruling, I seriously believe this more now that don't be surprised if the Ripple versus SEC case ends abruptly. And to get ahead of some of the smart... People in the comments, I didn't specify when or how. Could be settlement, trial, mistrial, dismissal, but I believe it will be abrupt. And I've seen Jeremy Hogan post this many times that sometimes just a settlement just happens out of nowhere. At any time, in any situation, someone folds and just says, hey, you know what? Let's do that deal that we talked about earlier. And it feels like in order for that to have a more possibility to happen, we probably need to get beyond this moment. The SEC needs to know, uh, 
we're going to have to turn over these emails at some point. And that puts a little bit more power in Ripple's hand. And as we all know, Ripple wants to go public, but Ripple's not going public till this thing's over, right? So one step closer for them. And I know this is not the typical type of video that you know I do on my YouTube channel. Usually we're dissecting into charts, drawing lines, doing Fibonacci's and all that stuff. And here we are talking about a court document and lawyers and all that stuff chiming in on all of it. But the the origination of my channel was very uh, XRP focused. And it's been you know difficult during this time period just kind of having to sit on your hands and just kind of wait around for this thing. But this is a major development that happened here for the Ripple versus SEC. And we always say that Ripple versus SEC because the SEC is getting passed in this thing it's more like ripple versus the sec rather than the sec versus ripple but what a celebratory moment to get to here because i remember months ago we were hoping to have this wrapped up like in may or in june and here we are in july finally we got this point so one step closer guys but all right that'll be it guys late video release today sorry this video got out so late today i had a lot going on and one thing I haven't told you guys, right, is that I actually have a New Year's resolution for myself. I've never told you this. Uh, and I don't know why I kept it a secret, but you know why I kept it a secret? It's because I didn't want to be held accountable for having to follow through with my New Year's resolution. But my New Year's resolution was that I was going to learn how to play the drums. And I've been taking drum lessons. <laughs> So I'm hoping that by the end of the year, I can like post a video of me on Twitter playing the drums. So I had my drum lessons this afternoon. I also like can't hold myself to this. I also said I wanted to learn how to sing too. And I kind of like maybe slipped that into my New Year's resolution, but I don't know if I am going to because this silky smooth voice <laughs> does not know how to sing. Either way, working on the drums right now. Um, in my last video, I mentioned that I'm actually going to be off of YouTube on um, Monday through Wednesday of next week. So I won't be back on YouTube next week until the 21st. So I'll still be here the rest of this week, but I won't be there Monday through Wednesday of next week. I didn't tell you why. Uh, and then people were guessing, what is it like a link to thing again, like you did last time? And no, no, it's not like that. I'm actually visiting a crypto friend during that time. We're just going to talk about markets and do all kinds of stuff. And it's nothing, it's nothing like promotional or anything like that. It's actually just I'm visiting somebody. I'm visiting people in crypto. It's kind of cool. So there's nothing, nothing crazy happening with why I won't be here next week, but I won't be here Monday through Wednesday of next week. Otherwise, awesome deal over there with the SEC and them getting denied by the judge. We'll keep an eye on it. If you get anything new out of Attorney Jeremy or to John Deaton or any of the other fantastic people who follow this case, I'll try to relay that to you as it comes out. Otherwise, I hope that you guys are having a great day, evening, morning, whenever you end up watching this. And thank you so much for watching. So that's it. Thank you so much. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor. But if you ever need to pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.